Asia Dutton today has suggested that Anthony Albanese should consider calling the voice off. Have a listen. Frankly, I think the Prime Minister is at a point where if he realises that the voice is going down, and that's what all of the polling is indicating at the moment, then he should make it a decision that's in our country's best interest and say, look, you know, I'm going to call it off because it's just going to divide the country down the middle. It's not going to achieve the outcome that we're talking about. Once again, the voice was a huge talking point in Parliament today. Order. The referendum is about two things. It's about recognition and, and it's about listing. It's about making a practical difference. And I simply will not engage in the style of politics that we're seeing today. All right, let's bring in my panel this evening, Sky News host Cory Bernardi and Queensland National Senator Matt Canavan. Welcome to you both. Look, this week has been the worst for the government when it comes to The Voice. Uh, Matt, we've really seen Labor under pressure, both in Parliament and in the media, to actually explain clearly what The Voice is, who will sit on the body, which areas of public policy The Voice will be able to give advice on, and they've been accused and, and left exposed for lacking detail. Well, that's exactly right, uh, Shari, and uh, uh, the government hasn't just been able to not answer the questions, it's also divided the country on this. I mean, even before we go to the polls, uh, the government has lost this debate because their objective here uh, a year ago, what they keep saying is that this, this vote, this voice will somehow unite the country. Well, it's clearly not doing that and most likely almost certainly not going to do that. Uh, I mean, even if the voice was to now get up, it'll be, be so by the looks of it, a very, very slim uh, majority. So that, by definition, will not bring our country together. Uh, it'll only divide our nation. Uh, the only way now to, to avoid uh, that permanent division of our nation is to vote no. Uh, so we do not set up this divisive body in our constitution. We do not have our constitution being something of, of partisan uh, and controversial topics. The most important thing in any constitution is that the vast majority of citizens wholly accept that constitution. And we're very lucky, very fortunate, to be one of the very few countries in the world where our constitution has stood the test of time. It hasn't mm -hmm. been particularly controversial. It's had very, very few and minimal changes in its 120 years of life. Mm -hmm. We should only ever seek to make changes which have significant, substantial, cross-party support. Mm -hmm. Now, Anthony Albanese had the chance to potentially deliver that. He could have spoken and talked to the opposition, but he railroaded through this option without any, any compromise. He's only got himself to blame for this, and I agree with the opposition leader. Now, the best thing for the nation for it would be for us to not go through this divisive topic. It's such a pity because had Albanese uh, chosen just to have Indigenous recognition in the Constitution, and while that is a constitutional change... Uh, that is something that surveys indicate the majority of Australians would have got behind. It would have been something like the same-sex marriage plebiscite. You'd, you'd have something like a 90-plus percent of people voting to recognise Indigenous people in the Constitution. But adding the voice to Parliament, when Labor hasn't been able to provide detail, is where they have come unstuck. And, Corey, you have to worry, this isn't just the no campaign that we've seen accusing the Prime Minister and Linda Burney of not having detail, but this is left-leaning media outlets like The Project this week who've really got stuck into the PM. Well, this is part of the problem, Shari, is uh, a lot of the questions the no campaign have been uh, asking are now being asked by the yes campaign. We saw that on the project with the left leaning, but also on my show a couple of weeks ago, I had Chris Kenny on, who's a, a fierce advocate for the yes campaign. He made a couple of statements which have now been contradicted by the minister themselves. It's uh, you know meant to be a consultative body, but we've got Linda Burney saying they can make a contribution on anything that's relevant to them. Malcolm Turnbull today has come out on Twitter and said basically the voice, if it gets up, can contribute to any part of public policy at all. And then when you add the, the framework of the Prime Minister very early in the piece where he said it would be a very brave government that ignores the opinion of the voice, you've got a de facto uh, um, uh, mm. policy-making body because everyone's going to be too scared to go against it for fear of being called racist. This is the most divisive 
This is the most racist proposal we have ever seen and they are desperately trying to mop it up uh, to, to sandbag uh, some sort of idea that it's about recognition. It's not. We've got well, an embarrassing and, and minister. To, um, I watched Question Time Yes. And also to, to, yeah. to be We've part of the Prime Minister's own legacy, I, I think, is, is a big part of it as well.